I got 20 job offers uh, from the oil companies. And I wasn't sure exactly what I did want to do, but I knew it wasn't that. I knew it was something that would really have an impact on the world. After graduating from MIT with a doctorate in chemical engineering, Robert Langer had it made. More than 20 lucrative job offers, four from Exxon alone, meant Langer would have everything he could ever want. But an experience doing charity work for low-income families nagged at him. He turned it all down. All of it. And the ordinary guy from Albany chose to be extraordinary. But extraordinary wasn't easy. Langer had reasoned that the field of medicine provided a fertile ground for impacting lives. But in the 1970s, medicine provided few opportunities for a chemical engineer. He struggled to find a job. One of the people at postdocs in my lab, a guy named Barry Brunow, he said to me, he said, Bob, he said, there's a surgeon in Boston named Judah Folkman. And he says, sometimes he hires unusual people. And for good reason. In 1974, future Benjamin Franklin medalist Judah Folkman, then a researcher at the Children's Hospital of Boston, had an unusual idea, a cure for cancer. Like normal cells, cancer cells need a blood supply to survive. Tumors actually trick the body into growing additional vessels to provide a blood supply, allowing the tumor to get larger and larger. Scientists call this stimulation of new blood vessel growth angiogenesis. And Folkman believed if he could stop angiogenesis and cut off the blood supply to the tumor, he could effectively kill the tumor and thereby cure the cancer. I thought that that would be great if there's some way that we could do that. That might make an enormous difference. Langer joined Falkman's team and they soon found what Falkman had been looking for. In the lab, Falkman and Langer's drug worked to inhibit tumor blood vessel formation. But there was a problem here. Delivering the molecule to a tumor site in the body proved near impossible. When injected or taken orally, the drug would be destroyed before arriving at its very destination. I experimented literally with hundreds of techniques and uh, none of them worked. Finally, I worked out a way where I thought maybe we could use certain types of plastics. Langer's device was revolutionary. A plastic wafer containing a long chemical network or microscopic tunnels that drug molecules would have to navigate before exiting. Implanted at a tumor site, he believed it would deliver a steady stream of the drug, intact and sustained over a long period of time. When I first gave lectures on it, it was pretty much ridiculed. It went against conventional wisdom. Frustrated, Langer left academia, secured patents for his delivery devices, and founded Enzytec, which brought to market the first successful controlled release delivery devices. But Langer didn't stop there. In 1988, he used his knowledge of polymers to design new ways to engineer tissues and organs in the lab. He had gotten the idea years earlier from Jay Vacanti, a surgeon at the Children's Hospital of Boston came to see me because he was facing the problem is how does he create a new liver for a child who right now is going to die unless there's a transplant and there's this huge donor shortage. Langer developed a polymer on which human cells would grow and he crafted this into a scaffolding shaped like a clump of seaweed. You see the seaweed shape allowed Langer to grow tissues in all three dimensions similar to the shapes of our real organs inside our very bodies. From lab grown organs to microchip implants that battle brain cancer, the sheer volume of Langer's contributions to science is staggering. Once passed over by academia, Robert Langer is now the most cited engineer in history. But for Langer, the most important part, his work has directly impacted millions of lives. I really loved it. I certainly didn't dream when I was a, a young man that my life would be like this, and I'm very pleased that it's you know, I've had the opportunity to contribute to society.